All right, so for those who have not been here, this is MCPL Hot Ones. Today, this guest has been a little bit of a mystery because we kept it a secret for a while. But without further ado, joining me right now is Greer Carson. He is MCPL's library director. Came here to MCPL in 2018, worked as the access and content manager for a little while, and then the associate director. And now he's been in uh, the position of library director for about two years. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Hi, thank you for having me. How are you feeling today? Are you feeling ready? I am ready. I have yeah. no idea how this is going to go. Yeah. Well, I'm ready. We're in it together, so we'll see how it goes. But Very good. We're going to try to work our way through all eight wings. We have eight very hot sauces, and we're going to see how far we get. All right. Without further ado, this is MCPL Hot Ones, the program with hot sauces and even hotter questions. All right. Up for number one. This one's Smokies. This one's a very popular one. They're all fairly tasty until you get to the, the middle. Did you drench this? Oh, in the they're, hot sauce? they're very well sauced. How are you feeling? Just fine. Good. Child's mm -hmm. play. <laughs> mm. Ready for that first question? Yes. <laughs> all right. What is the best number of pets to have and why? Either two or ten. Two, because particularly if you have dogs, mm. uh, I think a lot of times um, pets can represent uh, some aspect of your personality. Um, and so most of us have some dual aspect of our personality. And so two dogs can be a very interesting mix. Mm. Um, and I'm speaking from experience, my own dogs are so different that uh, I can't help thinking that, well, some aspect of Lola's personality reflects my own and some aspect of Marlo's reflects my own. And that dichotomy between the two of them is interesting to watch. So, and two makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. It's probably why it's a popular number. Yeah, but 10, tell me about this 10. <clears throat> I don't think anyone should ever have more than 10 pets. And th this is also based on experience because once upon a time, my wife and I um, had 11 cats at once. And this is while, while we were renting apartments in Chicago, in Cincinnati, and Bloomington in some capacity, um, and found ourselves, well, first of all, you can't rent a place with that many animals because you can't tell the landlord that you have that many animals. So you put on the lease something like three cats, which sounds sane, I guess. In our case, they were all from the same litter because um, we let one of our cats impregnate the other. And next thing you know, we had a whole bunch of kittens. And we thought, wow, this is great. Um, then we move into an apartment, and half of them looked alike, and the other half looked alike. And we thought, well, we can pull this off. Because the only way you're going to get caught, apart, apart from the landlord coming into the apartment, is if they're all in the windows. And because you're not going to get more than three cats in a window at a time, if they all look alike, not a problem. People from the outside are going to assume it's the same cat. We did that for years. We never slept. We were always nervous. Anytime they had to come in and inspect the place, we had to cram all the cats into a car and go yeah. sit in a park for a few hours. The escape route. It yeah. was just, it was terrible. That and they all died at the same time because they were all the same generation. Yeah. So 11 cats was not good. So I would set the limit at 10 pets if you're an irrational, impulsive individual, and two, if you're more interested in your pets reflecting your own personality. Yeah, I'd have to say 10. It might be a little bit much for me, especially cats. I feel like, yeah. I don't know, if it was like 10 birds, maybe, or like eight <laughs> birds, two cats, possibly. Yeah. Yeah, but 10 yeah. is a lot. I'm glad that you managed 11. That's impressive. And they ran the place. I mean, yeah, yeah they were in charge. So I don't miss it. Yeah. I miss them. I miss the cats, but I don't miss having 11 cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Very impressive, though. Yeah. All right, next question. What's your favorite game right now? I know you're a big gamer. Mm. Yeah, what game are you playing right now? I have to admit, we are playing the Demon Souls remake for the PS5. Um, I, ours is a big Soulsborne family. 
Uh, my kids in particular, are ju they just obsess over anything Dark Souls, Bloodborne, any of those games. And certainly Elden Ring. Rather than get into the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC right now, we decided to pick up the original, the start of the whole Souls phenomenon, which my kids had never played because I don't think they were born when the game came out for the PS3. Um, and we got a PS5 for Christmas this last year. So we bought Demon Souls with it, figuring they'll try it out. They had no interest, and we finally convinced them, you gotta give it a shot, the remake is really beautiful, I think you'll love it, and it stuck. And so now we're all playing it. And uh, I can't compete with either of my kids, so my build is pretty pathetic, um, but it doesn't matter. I'm enjoying it. I enjoy watching my kids play much more than playing myself right now. Yeah. So the last game, I was talking to a colleague about this earlier today. The last game I lost myself in for a very long time to the point where like it was like redefining some aspect of my life was Skyrim, which I know is that's not uncommon. That's happened to a lot of gamers that that game has just stayed with them. It changed everything for them. They still go back and play it and because Bethesda takes their sweet time in releasing new games and Elder Scrolls Six won't come out, I mm -hmm. think, until 2026 or 27. There's justification in going back to Skyrim, but that was the last time, and that was 2011. That was the last time I played a game and really, really got lost. Mm -hmm. My wife and my kids have done it several times since then. I think when Breath of the Wild came out, they, oh, yeah. that's all they did. Um, and my kids now will jump from game to game and totally immerse themselves and everyone. And I find myself more of, uh, uh, of an observer than a participant, but I'm, I am waiting for Elder Scrolls Six. I may have to quit my job when that comes out. We'll have yeah. To see. yeah, take a long vacation. At yeah. the very least, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's my my role. Definitely is the observer, not the player. <laughs> I'll watch, but playing not my 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 forte. Hey, there's that's why Twitch exists. That's, there's value in that. So yeah. yeah. All right, are we ready for that next wing? I think so. All right, this one's not too bad. It's also pretty tasty. I like the name. Funkies. Funkies hot sauce. Number yeah. two, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm taking too big a bite. <laughs> it's gonna work against me. Gotta do the nibble. Mm-hmm. Practice the nibble, yeah. How many times can I use the same napkin before it becomes dangerous? Mmm. I think it's not the uses, it's the the placement. Oh, that makes sense. As long as you don't place the napkin in your eye. <laughs> I've seen some other people do that. Mm -hmm. I'll remember not to do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. For this one, I know you're kind of a man of mystery around here. We don't know much about what you do in your personal life. Uh oh. But we had somebody that was curious because of a photo they found. <laughs> this one here. <laughs> <laughs> what song makes you want to dance? Makes you want to get funky? I don't like dance. No. No. Um, but <clears throat> actually, any like mid-tempo track with a funk foundation, at least I dance in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> hey Ladies by the Beastie Boys is the first thing that comes to mind, probably. Uh, Nobody Speak by Run the Jewels. Um, Maple Leaf Rag by Scott Joplin. Mm. So anything that's got syncopation and yeah. has some connection to funk uh, could make me dance if I were alone and questioning my life choices. Yeah. But yeah. generally speaking, I'm not a dancer, so. Yeah. yeah, I know you're not much of a dancer, but musician, I heard a little secret, but maybe that that was in your past, possibly. <laughs> That's in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I won't talk about music, but <laughs> other than to say anything with a funk foundation could make me want to dance. Yes. Yeah, yes. there's nothing like funk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. next question. If you could bring a fictional character to life, who would it be? Either Gandalf the Grey or Gandalf the White. Oh. So like, <clears throat> when Frodo sees Gandalf return to the Shire after mm -hmm. so long and is excited to see him and jumps into his arms and Gandalf embraces him, that always makes me feel really good. Like, yeah. I'd like to be a hobbit and wait for one of the wizards to show up and show how much he cares for me slash protects me mm -hmm. in all of my ilk. Uh, but Gandalf the White is far more powerful and um, heroic and um, organized. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, uh, and the leader that he eventually becomes. And who wouldn't want that mm-hmm. on your side? So, yeah. yeah. And specifically, Ian McKellen as Gandalf. Yeah, <laughs> good the character. character I would want to come to life. Yeah. You know, Gandalf the White to come and save the day, but Gandalf mm-hmm. the Grey maybe to party with a little bit. Yeah. Party with, but also to yeah. Yeah, be that sort of guardian figure. Or go to the library, like yeah. he does. Uh-huh. All right? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of great. Sit there and read a bunch of old dusty scrolls with Gandalf the Grey, oh, yeah. waiting for the end of the world and pretending you're mm-hmm. going to figure out how to stop it. Yeah. That's kind of a cool vibe. But Gandalf the White coming back is like, yeah, we are going to stop it. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. again, who would not want that? fictional character to come to life. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Sauron, I guess, doesn't want that. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. one, the yeah. one hesitant one, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, how are you feeling about that next sauce? I'm yeah. ready. What do we got? Number three. Yeah, this one's also really good. Okay. It's a little bit spicier, though. And Just what, a little bit, not much. And no cheese, according no to cheese. the name. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no cheese. Smaller bites. Nice. I don't keep taking too big a bite. <laughs> Does anyone pop the whole thing in their mouth? Oh, yeah. The last person. Really? Josh Wolf. Oh, the sure. The very did. last I saw one. Yeah. The last dab, the hottest one. Yeah. Let's talk about Josh Wolf a little bit, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come in the back. <laughs> <laughs> He's a tough act to follow. Yeah. Yeah, no, Josh made me also eat a whole one, which for a whole one, I, I wouldn't encourage to do, and I did not enjoy. But for Josh, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> All right, next question. If you heard a knock at your door and then opened it, which would you be most be most surprised to see, a walrus or a fairy? Hmm. Well, <clears throat> I don't answer the door when there's a knock at the door of my house. So I have to think, hypothetically, if I were to answer the door when somebody knocks on the door at my house, what would surprise me more? Well, probably a fairy, because they don't exist, right? So if a walrus knocked on the door, I would certainly be consumed with, how did it get here? Who's playing this joke on me? What do Mm -hmm. I do with this poor animal that's out of its element? Time is ticking. All of that stuff. But at least I would still have some understanding of the natural world. A fairy shows up, it's all over. It's yeah. like dinosaurs showing up again. Okay, now I don't understand the universe, so I have to adjust my thinking and think about protecting yeah. my family and all of these people who had these superstitious beliefs were right, and what am I going to do with mm. that? And that would be a little more surprising than a walrus, Yeah. I think. Yeah, I know. Definitely a lot more groundbreaking. You definitely wouldn't think that, oh, there's a fairy that's going to, like, come and save the day. Yeah. I feel like you'd, like, be mostly shocked at first that a fairy even exists and that right. they chose your door. That's right. Exactly. Of all doors. So there are a couple yeah. of levels of paranoia involved in that. Yeah. yeah. And But I certainly wouldn't go straight to, a fairy, how lovely. Oh, great. What can you do for me? Do you grant wishes or are you just going to be my friend? It would immediately be defensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The walrus hopefully would be okay. Wouldn't stab you with one of its tusks, hopefully. I yeah. wouldn't look well since I don't answer the door. I'd be just be looking through the window. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and then close it and either call the police or plan on moving or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Nice. All right, next sauce. Which this one is my favorite. It's sweet. Which okay. I like that. Yeah. Well, this one's slimier than all the others. That makes me nervous. <laughs> Slime means it goes down easier. Is that, is that what it means? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's just there's more sauce on it. <laughs> Almost licked my fingers. That's not necessary in this, is yeah. it? It's a bad idea. Would not recommend. <laughs> I think this napkin is done. Peace. I'll move on to the next. I'm okay. being very careful because I don't want to suffer. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't. Oh, you have been taking bread. Okay. Mm-hmm. Bread, milk, yeah. Our HR director just said, please don't be a workers' comp case tonight. <laughs> it won't get that far. Hopefully. Uh, hopefully we'll see. not. Oh, that's doable. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's not, not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. All right. In this picture, 
you're a little bit older, a little bit more seasoned. <laughs> Looks like maybe you've had a job or two. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. What is the worst job you've ever had? The worst job? Yeah, the worst. Detasseling mm -hmm. corn. As soon as we moved to Indiana. Yeah. Wow. So we moved to Indiana when I started uh, eighth grade, actually. And um, I, was, I learned that a popular summer job in this state is to detassel corn. And they bus you out to the cornfields with groups of peers mm -hmm. and say, and they, no gloves, nothing. Just here's what you do. Here's how a corn stalk works. This is what we need. You work your way down the row. We'll scream at you when it's lunchtime or whatever. And so I was already like trying to adjust to being in Indiana and not knowing anyone and missing friends and family back in Virginia and stuff like that. And so here's your summer job and do this. And um, I'm not making this up. Mm -hmm. the, it was one day and they called it early because there was a tornado. They said there was a tornado warning, everybody get in the bus. So we got in the bus and everything went green and gray. Mm -hmm. Saw the twister however many miles away, but it was wow. flat. It was a cornfield. And that was it. And they said, don't worry. It's going in a different direction. We'll bust you guys back home and mm -hmm. come back tomorrow is what I remember. The, come back tomorrow. The foreman saying, or whatever the wow. person's title was. So yeah. that was it. So I quit. <laughs> uh, so my parents, like, I'm going to not return uh, yeah. for this job. So that was probably the worst job I've ever had. I guess a close second would be mm -hmm. <clears throat> when I was an undergrad here at IU, mm -hmm. I took a part-time job at a copy store where they made you know, photocopies mm -hmm. uh, that was in the union. Uh, in the student union, it was called Copies and More. And it was this little hole-in-the-wall place that people would pop in super fast for a bunch of copies of tests and so on. And you know, So this was like 98. Um, I'd never done a retail job. I didn't know how to work a register. I didn't know the first thing about making photocopies. And I wasn't prepared for the fact that a lot of faculty would go in there and need something really, really fast. Yeah, so I yeah. screwed up every transaction. I did all the math wrong. I got yelled at by a bunch of professors and students. So I lasted two days on that job. And I just, just didn't show up on the yeah. third day. And that was that. So those were two jobs that I would say did not go well. <laughs> It made me think, wow, if I have to grow up and get a job and keep it Fantastic. in order to support myself, I don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. But it ain't one of these. Yeah, yeah. not detasseling coin. Yeah. No. No, ma'am. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I don't miss it at all. Yeah, not going to go shuck a coin after work just for fun. Nope, but I have tremendous respect for people who work out in fields or on farms like that on a daily yeah. basis because it takes quite a bit of grit and strength, physical and mental, to do that kind of thing. Yeah. And I have neither. Oh, my gosh, yeah. How long did you last? Do you remember about how long you had that first job? For the detasseling yeah. corn? Mm -hmm. It was one day. It, yeah, that was it. Oh, it was just a day. Yep. Once they said they spotted the tornado and they said everybody can come back tomorrow, but we're stopping early for the day. And then yeah. I went home and told my parents, like, I, I don't want to do this again. I'm not going back. And, you know, yeah. I, I thought everything about this move. And now we're here in Indiana and I'm happy in a tornado. This is a sign. This I should is, not yeah. be doing this. Yeah. So it was a very weak response to a unique situation. Yeah. That's my number one worst job. Yeah, no, I don't yeah. know if people, many people could top that. That's a pretty bad job. Yeah, it wasn't fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this is a jump, sort of. So uh -oh. it's called the forbidden fruit. So when it's when it gets pretty spicy. Yeah. Number five is where we're at right now. Dry. Okay, I'm gonna handle that. You're not getting as red or as sweaty as Danny got, <laughs> which is a good sign. You've made it pretty far. But this might take a second. Mm -hmm. It's starting to build. Yeah. Hmm. It's still not too bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're a pro. So far, you're 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 a pro. Thank you. <laughs> that feels good to hear. I have the confidence to continue and make it through the end. All right, let's see if the math that you did in that copying job, if that comes <laughs> into play. Yeah, that's right. All right, so just a, a simple math question, not too hard, not too difficult. 
Given that triangle ABC has angles 37 degrees. Oh, start over. I've already <laughs> lost. <laughs> I'll fast it to you, too. I know this one's a long one. Given that triangle ABC mm-hmm. has angles 37 degrees, 94 degrees, and X. Mm-hmm. And triangle DEF has angles 94, 59 degrees, and Y. Are the two triangles similar? Now let me take a look at it too. That's great, that will help. (laughs) I think it. Okay, ABC has 37, 94, and X, D, E, F has 94, but 59, and Y, are they similar? So similar means that <clears throat> the angles have to be the same, even though the lengths mm-hmm. may be different, which means these are not similar triangles. Yeah. Is that correct? Do you have a, do you have something? Yes, yes. yes. Correct, yeah. <laughs> triangle DEF would have to have 49 degrees instead of 59 degrees. There it is. Nice. I'm yes. glad that somebody is like more recent to geometry <laughs> and knew that, because that would take me a minute. You did. Yeah. <laughs> you did. Well, I can't believe I remember what similar means when it comes to triangles. Yeah, I know, yeah. Similar, congruent. All right, it's kind of coming back. Yeah, it's impressive. I'm embarrassed because I worked at a bank. I should know math. But math, you know, that's, yeah, that's calculus, I think, or algebra. That's not geometry. We're in the humanities. We don't do any of that stuff. Computers do that for us. Yeah, library work definitely is not not math-related. No. God, that was tough. I got nervous. And after that one? Whichever one that was, number five, Mm -hmm. which is now starting to bother my tongue. You feel it? Yeah, I'll give you a question to see if that that helps it die down just a little bit. All right. All right. Telekinesis or telepathy? Telekinesis or telepathy? Mm -hmm. Telekinesis. Because, well, first of all, that's using the force. Who would not want to do that? That'd be amazing. Um, Secondly... Funny as it sounds, I think there are very little, there are few consequences to someone or multiple people having telekinetic powers. Telepathy. I don't want anyone to know what I'm thinking. And I don't want to know what other people are thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's like a personal comfort level. That would bring down civilization like in an instant. If people could start reading each other's minds, mm-hmm. we'd start over. Yeah. Which, I don't know, maybe that sounds good, but... For, I think for most people at most stages of life, no, we don't want to actually burn this all down mm-hmm. and start over. Let's just reform. Yeah. And I think telepathy would force civilization to its knees. Yeah. So I don't think that's a healthy thing. I think moving objects with your mind, a la the force, uh, is a lot mm-hmm. safer and probably more fun. Yeah. I'm sure there's a counter to that. but Yeah. I think you're right. No, I think you're right. I do have a follow-up question, though. I'm curious. Mm. Would you rather someone be able to read your mind or you be able to read their mind? Which I don't want either one. Either one. They're both nope. bad. No. Nope. Yeah. I mean, you think you want to be able to read somebody's mind yeah. because it's mm-hmm. an advantage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or it, you know, you can address your own paranoia or whatever it is. But mm-hmm. it's kind of like you don't know what you're wishing for. Yeah. And if you can actually read somebody else's mind, it would change your relationship with them. Mm-hmm. And they wouldn't know it unless you chose to let them know. And that is a heavy burden. Yeah. I think it would be incredibly isolating, particularly if you couldn't control it. Mm-hmm. So no, nothing about reading someone else's mind sounds good to me. I mean, yeah. sure, in moments, in certain situations, mm-hmm. particularly yeah. if it would be an advantage to solve a problem. Yeah. Sure, that'd be great for like a second. But no, that sounds like a terrifying power. Yeah. No, bring on telekinesis. Yeah, no, yeah. oh my gosh. Thinking about the voice and the Matilda too, I, yeah, yeah. love it. Yeah. All right, this is the big one. Oh, jeez. Are you ready? Do you feel... I need to eat some bread. <laughs> Prepare. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. This one still gets me sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's pretty intense. But you got it. You've done okay so far. I think you're good. Thank you. Your mm. confidence means the world. Let's try this. All right. This is number six. Six. Yeah. I'm going to continue to use this. And this one is, yeah. Enjoy. Is that blood? <laughs> no. Okay. I 
going through so much to do this for you. Yeah, it is my blood. <laughs> Not a health code at all. Don't tell HR. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. okay. Oh. it's okay Ooh. it's okay huh. <laughs> milk, water more mm-hmm. bread staring at images of flames are not helping <laughs> <laughs> is that part of the trick? <laughs> it is here you go, you got this it's uh. physical and psychological <laughs> oh my god okay oh. god, time for the jacket to come off You got it. You got it. Oh. oh, gosh. Should I distract you with a question? That'd be lovely. Okay. Let's All talk. Right. Can you correctly read the poetry written on the back of the slip? Mm. And I'll pass it to you so you can take a look. <laughs> Don't you think so, reader, rather, saying, lather, Bather, father, finally, which rhymes with enough, though, through, bow, cough, hoff, I don't even know what that word is, soft, soft, (laughs) tough, hiccough, has the sound of sup, my advice is, give it up. (laughs) 1922, those modernists, full of themselves, oh, man, whoo. You did good, yeah. (sighs) That just shows you how difficult the English language is. I'm surprised that you managed to get it. Man, that little bottle. All right. My eyes are watering. Don't touch the face. Yeah, stay away from the eyes. Mm. Probably the nose, too. Yeah. Is it gross to gargle water or anything like that? (laughs) No. (laughs) It might help if you try to snort it through your nose, maybe, get it all the way in the system. Mm. There we go. Woo! Ha! Huh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that was not the last one? No, no. We still got one. Okay. One, two more to go. <laughs> Woo! You got it, though. I'll distract you with another question. And it's easy. This, okay. is, this one people answer so easily. Uh, why do they call it an oven when you oven in the cold food of out hot eat the food? Mm. That's an excellent question. <laughs> <clears throat> I think... The answer is, it should be called an of out instead oh. of an of in, right? Why are we talking about of in yeah. when you take the food out? It should be an of out. It reminds me of Ovaltine. Why do we call it Ovaltine? <laughs> the jar is round. The glass is round. It should be called round team. Same logic, right? Round team. Round team and of out. I that's like right. That I was a Seinfeld <laughs> reference. I think that's what they're asking. I think, yeah, the person who asked that question, I don't think they're here. Does anybody know? No? About? Is that the right the answer to that? Of Yeah. Oh, I see. About Trip you up yeah. after you take the bomb. Is that the idea? <laughs> Along with the poetry question? <laughs> Sadists. All right. Yeah. Woo! <sighs> we just have two more. I, it looks like you, you've calmed from the bomb. You might be ready for the next, I think. Somebody warned me about the bomb. Yeah. They were right. Yeah. They were right. Uh, uh. <clears throat> All right. Let's yeah. do this. This one's another jump. This is like a fairly, fairly high jump. Yeah, it's bad. What is that? An <laughs> ape? Yeah. An ape in a top hat? hat. <laughs> but you got it. Yeah. Mm. Eat more bread. You're only getting one slice. You have five slices. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll be able to get working on the bread. <laughs> All right. Mm. Yeah, number seven, yeah. <sighs> Who came up with this idea for the show? I mean, the <laughs> Sean Evans show. Mm-hmm. What, was it just him? What, I mean, do you know? I don't know. Oh, this one. Oh, my gosh, I put it on my tongue. Oh, no. Yeah, it's okay. I got it. It's okay. I just need a second. But... Yeah, no. I I think it it was the channel, First We Feast. I'm not sure if it was Sean Evans by himself. Okay. But Sean Evans is a sadist. That's what I've convinced myself. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. (sighs) Yeah. (sighs) 
You got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> By the end of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I swear that's the last thing I'll take off. Mm. Maybe my shoes. That might help. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Ooh. Man. I did not expect that. Mm. I really didn't. Yeah. <sighs> can't remember the last thing I ate that was this hot. You're doing good though. Hmm. Doing great. Oh, yeah, I'll feel. distract you. Yeah. Do yeah. people shake <gasps> at all? Uh oh, that's a no. <laughs> I should be worried. Just a little bit alarming. Yeah, I, I think you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Mm. Gotta make it. It's gonna you be got great. It. You got it. <laughs> all right, next question. question. If you had the opportunity to go to space, mm-hmm. would you? Um, well, I would love to, but I'll never be able to do it. Mm. I'm afraid of heights. Oh. <clears throat> I have a hard time with our stairs. The three so, floors? Yeah. yeah. I usually hug the wall when I go up or down. Um, and elevators are difficult, particularly if you yeah. can see out of them. So... As much as I'd love to go into space, yeah. it'll never happen. Yeah. Whenever yeah. space tourism actually kicks off, mm-hmm. if I'm still around and can afford it, it's not going to be an option. Yeah. yeah. Now, if I could be, I don't know, put to sleep and wake up on mm-hmm. Mars and we were colonizing Mars by then, and yeah. that might be nice. But then I'll miss the whole outer space experience. Yeah. So, uh, space elevator sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to participate in it. Um, yeah, being on a space station or mm. being the Earth. Yeah. Sounds fantastic. <clears throat> Never going to happen. So, yes, I want to, and no, I will decline an invitation to go to space. <laughs> yeah. I should get over my fear of heights. My kids tell me that. At least you know your limits. Yeah. I will never get over my fear of the dark. Oh, really? No matter how many times I have somebody like jokingly turn off the lights and like I'm, I should be more uh, capable of handling it. I yeah. just, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. At least we know our limits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you ever think about like, <clears throat> how can I overcome my fear of the dark? What like yeah. exercises could I put myself through or anything like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come up with anything good? No. <laughs> I feel like, well, they say like the way you address your fear is you confront it. So you have to put yourself in that situation over and over again and remind yourself you're in control and all that kind of stuff. I can't even do that. Yeah, with heights. Yeah. No, I just Mm -hmm. can't. Yeah. Ma'am. Yeah. Better than some other fears, though. Out of all of them, heights and and the dark. I think it's, we're doing pretty good. I think so. So I feel like we've gotten to know you a decent amount today. But, you know, I thought maybe we should take a stroll down memory lane. This sounds terrible. And just take a look at some other hobbies that you like oh to God. do in your spare time. Yeah, does that sound good? I think so. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just you, you and the crew. <laughs> right yeah. after one of us hits our head on the overhead door. If you're a Star Wars fan, you'll understand what that is. Oh, man. Yeah, you're a Star Wars fan, right? Yeah. A little bit. So this was, yeah, meeting them in person. You're that is not the look, my face, that's not the look someone should have when they're on the Death Star. It really is not. As happy if you want to get yourself yeah. back to your ship and there are a bunch of stormtroopers surrounding it, that's not the face you should have. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm thinking of something else. Maybe I'll stay, maybe I'll work here. <laughs> I wonder if they're hiring. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you've hung out with them. Maybe you've hung out with them too, maybe. (laughs) That's amazing. That is great. Ten companions. You should be known as the Fellowship of the Ring. They're all serious and listening to Elrond, except for me, who's looking way off at who knows what, probably the waterfalls. Happy to be there. Admiring the scenery. I've always wanted to be here. I'm never going to leave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Improperly dressed. <laughs> wrong haircut. Just a little bit. Looking little goofy. Bit. I think you blend in fairly well. 
Yeah. I'm like Pippin. And he goes, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, you like them, but maybe not as much as you like the Avengers. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <clears throat> Look at that. <laughs> that's, my, that's Thor. My hand is on Thor's shoulder. Is that right? Yeah. I think, I, I, you know what's great about this? No one's laughing at my joke. <laughs> Everyone's so serious. They're yeah. all talking about shawarma, and you're talking about who knows what. I don't know what. They're really, really serious with their cafeteria food, and I'm yeah. cracking jokes, and no one's laughing, particularly Thor, who's like, this is the last straw. I could yeah. crush you. I'm just thinking about where and how to do it. This guy's falling asleep. So I'm not a <clears throat> Marvel or general superhero mm person at all a lot of the stuff I like is in line with that and for some reason I just that missed yeah. me or or whatever yeah that's um, so surprising yeah yeah <clears throat> but I did enjoy hanging out with them it was <laughs> nice. a good photo op yeah nice yeah <laughs> now this is my personal favorite hobby that I I think I've heard that you do cooking with Steve <laughs> <laughs> Steve and Blue that's yeah. right well we had him to the southwest kitchen just to inaug yeah. inaugural program nice. went really really well I was spending time in France, so I had my French shirt and hat on, and uh, I had a little more hair than I have now, and I can make three things in the kitchen oh, at home, so I must have been making one of them right there. I can make pancakes, I can make omelets, which I guess that's like the same thing, and I can make some really, really pedestrian curry. Oh. That's curry's kind of it. To be, yeah, curry's yeah. good. It's impressive. Yeah. yeah. But I got to stare at my phone the whole time. Like, how much garlic? What is that again? Did I screw it up? Yeah. Start over again? I'm, I'm very, very unnatural. I'm a culinary Philistine yeah. all the way. I'm sure Blue so, would love you, Curry. Yeah. I appreciate that picture because, wow, that's the last thing. I With an apron and everything. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> Man. All right. We've reached, we've reached the time. <gasps> <clears throat> the last one, do you feel ready? This no. is the one that we do the, the extra dab on. This even says, by heatonist at the bottom. Uh, yeah. That is not encouraging. <laughs> okay. I think you got it. I'll start, and it's, yeah, the lightest dab. You can do just a tiny bit. I have oh, to do that? To do a lot. No, don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little heavy-handed, not on purpose. I would do a very tiny dab. I'm afraid to even touch the bottle. Okay. <clears throat> oh, my burp burns. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> we got the trash can. There's a trash can. You can't see it. There's a trash can next to Greer, just in case. <laughs> There's any of you can see bodily fu fluids. That's right. Oops, that's too much. You can dab it off, yeah. yeah. Oh, here, I'll put this. <laughs> the beginning, yeah. I remember the beginning. <laughs> what a great time. All right. All right. And Josh cited a uh, sort of tradition to cheers. <clears throat> yeah, let's cheers. Yeah, we gotta actually do it. There we go. All right. Hey. <sighs> I know it's latent. I know it's coming. You like hearing the sounds of people chew. Is that nice? <laughs> Some ASMR. <laughs> I think this is not as bad. Uh, yeah. As the bomb. A lot of people say that, yeah. Yeah. At this point, our mouths are kind of like... Maybe that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Having yeah. their own separate little party. They're getting funky in there, and they just can't feel anything because they're too busy grooving. <laughs> All our taste buds are busy. <laughs> it's like yeah. dancing and being in the zone when you're dancing, mm -hmm. right? Dancing's so great. I love dance. Yeah. I'm going to dance when I get home tonight. <laughs> Can't wait. <clears throat> All right, this is the last question. 
A very easy one. Mm-hmm. Very ready, yeah. All right. What is the ultimate question to the life, the universe, and everything? Assuming that the answer is 42. The ultimate question is why math? Why? <laughs> That's so cruel. For those of us who don't take to math naturally, if the answer to the universe is 42, that sucks. That's, yeah. that's my, no. I, would, <clears throat> I, I like to think that one of the things we should strive for is to come to terms with mortality before it comes for us. Mm. And it'd be good to do that by the time you turn 42. Yeah. I, I have failed at that because I'm 47. <laughs> but that, that I will say with some confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Maybe I'll have it figured out by 42. I'll see. Um, I hope you do. <laughs> I hope you. you do. Yeah. Oh. That was it. How do you feel? Do you okay. feel like, Yeah? We got through the bomb, and the one after that was rough. Yeah. Uh, but the last one wasn't so bad. And now I'm coming down. I can handle that. Are you feeling ready enough to give us a special performance? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, special little story time, sort of chick up your sleeve. Oh, look at that. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's me reading to some uh, uh, some stuffed animals that some of our children's patrons brought in for story time. Mm-hmm. And that is a lovely Star Wars picture book that some of our fantastic yeah. children's staff picked out for me to read because they thought that would be appropriate, mm-hmm. which is kind of great. And I didn't get to spend as much time with those stuffies as I'd like in my office. I was, I was hoping for a nice conversation. Yeah. They just took off afterward, probably because I'm not a very good reader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that your plan today? Are you going to read to us? Yeah. I am not. <clears throat> um, I'm going to do a party trick. And I'll preface it by saying, unlike so many of my wonderful colleagues, I do not have a... Um, programming background. So I've never been a public librarian that puts on programs for uh, the public. I come from an education background, and I was a teacher, and I was a technology director, and um, and was in electronic music instruction and performance and things like that. And I went to IU to get my MLS, and then went straight into a school librarian gig, um, and then got into being a director at a small library, and then came here and went down the same path. So at no point in any of that uh, in, in my career did I do programs where I was doing story times and things like that. So I've seen, again, a lot of my colleagues excel at that, and I'm not going to try to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is what we might call a little party trick. <clears throat> and I would like a volunteer. They don't have to do anything, you don't have to perform. I just need someone to come up here and show that this is legit. The tools that you have today have me wondering if it could be legit. Honestly, yeah, what do you have? Well, and well, you can do it. If nobody wants to come up, no problem. These are real forks, right? Oh, maybe a test subject in the back, if he's willing. I think I see somebody that might want to do it. <laughs> yeah, come on down. Come on down. <laughs> so what I have are two forks, a set of toothpicks, and a salt shaker. Mr. Wolf, would you care to inspect these and confirm that they are real? No trick bottoms. Nothing up their sleeves. All right, very good. What I will do is I will balance these two forks on the end of one toothpick, which will sit atop another toothpick in a tea light arrangement. And then Mr. Wolf can, if he likes, or someone else can come up here and replicate this. The first thing I'm going to do is put a toothpick in the center of this. And then I'm gonna take the two forks and gonna jam them together like this. And I'm gonna put the second toothpick th- 
through the fork like this. And then I'm going to carefully balance that on the end of the other toothpick, like so. Whoops. We can cut that right and it's straight to the successful shot. And you do have to get the right. There we go. It is physics. Yeah. Okay. And so you can do this with the edge of a wine glass as well. There you go. Wow. Can you see this? Can we test? It looks like it's there. I, I don't want to, I'm not the test subject, so I, I can't vouch, but that looks like it's there. That's it. There you go. Oh. <coughs> so. I'm not going to pretend to understand exactly how this works, but it has to do with the center of gravity. So if you have equal forces pushing up and gravity pulling down, then it shifts the center of gravity such that it's really right here rather than on one end or normally right here or right here for the forks. And so it shifts it off. So you can do the same thing. You can put this on the edge of a glass and it'll do the same thing. Sometimes people will light the end of the toothpick on fire and it'll burn right to the edge of the glass. Yeah. The point being, minimal amount of pressure between the edge of the toothpick and the other surface will still balance something as heavy as two thick forks and hold it in place. So I learned this when I was in high school, and I think it was from a physics teacher. Or it might have been one of my friends in a physics class who paid more attention than I did. Um, and I've remembered how to do it ever since. So mm. every time I show this at a dinner or at a bar or something like that, everybody's always like, oh my God, wow. And so it's just <laughs> one of those silly party tricks. It is impressive. Like I can yeah. literally see the fork still kind of teeter tottering. So you can, yeah. There it goes. <laughs> so it's an easy trick to learn. Yeah. And with yeah. a little practice, you can do it uh, much more smoothly than I did. Yeah. That is my program. That yeah. is my performance. You did good. Honestly, Thank you. It's, yeah, it's very impressive. A little magic trick for us. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, and even us librarians remember a little bit of math and physics. Yeah, yeah. very minimal. Very say. minimal amount. <laughs> very That's minimal. right. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, now that you've done that, I didn't have any other questions unless somebody in the audience had a question. Yeah, do you uh -oh. have a question? Yeah. What's your favorite Oh, oh gosh, you would ask that question. I don't. I don't <laughs> and give uh, us a rendition afterwards. <laughs> I don't know Gorillas well enough to have a favorite song, but I do appreciate Damien Albert. I will say that. And I do have a favorite Blur song. Does that count? Sure. The Universal from The Great Escape, 1995. Nice. That's my favorite Blur song. Nice. Nice. Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Any other questions? Yeah. Ooh, that's, Ooh, yeah. Wow. Um, I remember seeing that when I was, I don't know, it was on HBO in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it was a little creepy. It was kind of like, um, and it's before I had read any of the books mm -hmm. and really didn't know a whole lot about it. Um, so I don't remember if it was good. I remember Aragon, the, the character, the way he was drawn, was a little intimidating, like kind of a scary, very thick um, like Viggo Mortensen's not like that at all. Yeah. So that was more yeah. comfortable for me. But I, I kind of remember that being on HBO around the same time that uh, the Rats of Nim, or Secret of Nim is the name of the oh, movie, yeah, yeah. based on the book, uh, was out and was on HBO at the same time, which I loved and I watched mm -hmm. over and over and over again. So that 70s version, animated version of The Hobbit, never stuck with me and, and you know, made me excited. But then when the Peter Jackson movies came out, it was very different, yeah. as was for a lot of people. That's why they're they're so great. But yeah. Yeah, I know. Personally, the the 1977 Hobbit, it for me, it is. I'm one of the ones that it does scare. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. I've gotten more used to it now because I've seen it a, yeah. a decent amount. But yeah, yeah no, a little scary. Yeah. 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 We're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's Any good other question. questions? Yeah, that was a good yeah. one. Yeah, another question, yeah. Have you seen it on the regular Hobbit video game? Ooh, yeah. Oh, man. So I've seen my kids play that. Um, and it's, it, well, aren't all Lego games effectively the same, right? So there's not a lot of variation. It's kind of like 
we're going to take this popular world or this story or this set of quests and do a Lego version of it so the mechanics are always kind of the same. I think it was either the Batman one or the Indiana Jones one had a few surprises and maybe that was just because oh, now you have a whip or you're Batman and you have all of these peripherals or something. But um, the it was the Star Wars one that really stood out to me, like where it was the more recent Lego Star Wars, where you go through all of the series, um, and they played that for over a year, and that I found very interesting and very impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. more so. Nice. Yeah, you know. But I have to admit, I'm not a Lego game fan. Yeah. I don't know why. They're funny, <laughs> um, <laughs> for sure, but I can't stick with them. Yeah. No, I need that really dark, gruesome. Yeah, the world the is falling souls. apart and you can save it, but you probably won't. Yeah. Dark Souls kind of thing. Yeah, probably yeah. Lego Batman is probably the closest that you get to that sort of, yeah. Oh, yeah. Saving the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I haven't played myself, yeah. I'm more of a Lego builder than a Lego game oh, player, okay. but yeah. Fair enough, yes. fair enough. Any other questions? Yeah. All right, since that was the All last right. one, yeah, let's give you a big round of applause for making it through. Thank you. Thank you for having me and thank you for great questions. Those were fun. I'll never do this again. <laughs> this is, it was, I was, it was in the, in the contract oh, that you that's signed. That's right, I forgot. It's, we All do right. everything again and we also drink from the sauces. Can I change yeah. my answer to the worst job ever question? <laughs> yes. All right, very good. Very good. <laughs>